we're going to talk about the terminal. And the terminal is something that's a little bit scary to people if they haven't done it before. It's kind of like looking inside your computer, kind of like opening the box. So we're going to teach you how to do that in a very nice, intuitive way without being overloaded with all these other things you don't need to know. The terminal is an incredibly powerful tool. It has been around for ages. It's as bare bones as it can get. It's very useful to have the basics down because it will really make your life easier no matter whether you use your own computer, you do computing on the cloud or yeah, anywhere else. When I started computer science and engineering, I was very scared of the terminal because, you know, I was coming from not doing any of this. And so I basically only used IDs forever. Eventually, when I had to start connecting to other computers or doing other work, I guess, that you couldn't necessarily do cleanly through an IDE, it just became more intuitive. I still use IDs to code, but I use a terminal consistently to move around, to move things around, to get into other computers, that kind of thing. To open your terminal, uh, I don't know what machine you have. I have a Mac, uh, but it's a very similar process in every machine. I would just go to the top, top right, uh, Spotlight Search, and I would say Terminal, and uh, you're gonna have your default terminal, right? So. I don't actually use the default terminal of the Mac. I have one called iTerm, which you can download, and there's a link below that you can click. It just kind of makes things a little bit easier, but again, this is my preference, right? Some people don't do that. So the first command we're going to cover is ls. You open the terminal, and then you're gonna get this window here. That's it. So this little squiggly that's there means that you're at your home directory. So if I do ls, it's going to show you what's in that directory. So type ls into your terminal, press enter, you're gonna see a bunch of files. Another thing I learned when I started doing like mobile apps and then eventually when I was at Goldman doing engineering was to always have this kind of like developer folder, right? So if you look at your computer, you always have documents, you have music. So you can actually create a folder called developer, right? Which most people don't know. To create a folder, we're going to type the command mkdir, so make directory. And then you're going to use, again, that squiggly forward slash, and then capital D developer, right? So you're going to type that in. Hit enter now, and then it's going to create that directory for you. Let's navigate to that directory and actually see the contents. So to change the directory, so move the directories, you can do cd. So you can say CD developer, and you're there now. And I'm going to LS, and I have a bunch of things on here, right? So I actually, over the years, have segmented my work. So everything that I did when I was working at Facebook, it's at FAIR. Everything that's NYU, NYU, et cetera, Grid, Kaggle, open source, all of it is kind of grouped together. So over the years, I can see, I mean, most of my work is open source. Um, so you can all see it, but <laughs> generally it's how I, I kind of group my work, right? I just created my first developer folder here. Maybe William can tell us why it's uh, nice to call it a developer folder. Yeah, so if you open your finder, so actually new trick, type open and then space dot and press enter, that's going to open your finder. And you see on the left, developer, um, has a little hammer, you know, Apple makes great tools for developers and they actually gave it a little icon, right? Which is a sign that if you're a developer, this is kind of something you should be doing. I really like this visual, this little hammer. Sometimes I have this problem, I procrastinate a lot, but if I see a hammer, it makes me want to hammer out the code. <laughs> to clear your terminal, meaning like just kind of delete everything that's under, you're not actually deleting it, you're just removing the words. You can type a command called clear and press enter, and now you're kind of reset. Personally, I hate clutter and typing clear, I mean, it clears up so many things. I wish it could also clear up my room, but uh, it's not that powerful yet, but uh, it's actually a nice thing to have. So we want to make every, every one of you love open source or at least contribute to it at some point. So let's create a folder called open source. So make there open source, right? And now you have this. 
And now you're going to go ahead and CD into that. So change the directory, CD open source, and then go ahead and type the command to list the files in there, ls. So now you can see the contents. Um, I have stuff on there as well because I've been um, moving a lot of stuff into this folder, but you likely don't because you just created it. Let's go ahead and create a project for this course. So let's just create a new folder called course. Great. And now you're going to move into that directory. Great. Now that you're there, let's create a file. We've been creating directors to moving around directories, but you also want to create files. So let's create a file called sum underscore file because the file names are really up to you. So the command is touch. I'm not sure why they said touch, but touch sum, sum underscore file dot py. And this is a Python file, right? Just by us naming it Python um, makes it a Python file. I don't really want a file called sum file, obviously, because that's not useful. Generally, machine learning, when we create anything that you're going to run from the command line, or you're going to be executing, you want to have the word main in it somewhere. And it's kind of like an unspoken rule that we all go by. Remember, you're coding not for you, but you're coding for your peers and your teammates. So if your teammates look at your project, they're going to be able to go in there and say, oh, these mains are actual executables. So let's go ahead and rename this file. Now, you can use this command called mv to do this, which also lets you move files, but we'll cover that in a minute. So mv, the, com the file that you want to rename, in this case is sum underscore file. Now the new name is just going to be main.py. So I type that in and press enter. And if you list your directory, you're going to see now that you only have main.py. A small trick to help you type faster, the terminals autocomplete stuff for you. So if you saw when I did it, I said MV space and I typed SO and then I pressed tab. If I press tab, it autocompletes the full name. So it's very convenient. When we're building models and we're doing research, um, we may have many approaches to a problem. If you're in industry or academia, you're trying to solve something, you usually are going to have many ideas on how to solve that. Maybe I will try a convolutional network, or maybe I'll try, I don't know, a logistic regression, whatever it is. Usually you're going to have multiple of these mains. So let's go ahead and copy our main so that we can create another one of this. So to copy a file, you type in cp, copy. and then type in the file name. Again, I press M tab, so it auto-completes for me. And then I can type the new file name. It's just going to be main underscore two, right? And then if you list your directory with ls, you see both files there now. But for now, we're not going to use both files, so I'm going to actually delete one of them. So to remove a file, you can say rm to remove. And then I'm going to remove the file to so I press M, tab, autocompletes to main, then underscore, and then tab, and then it remove, autocompletes the rest, and then I can remove it. And if I list that directory again, I see main.py. Now, you see that I'm compulsively typing clear and hitting enter all the time. I hate noise in the terminal. And so. also with rm, the command rm, you have learned about an incredibly powerful tool. The saying goes, with great power comes great responsibility. So please make sure when you use rm that you type very carefully because, yeah, you don't want to end up um, removing things you really don't want to remove. Be mindful of the file you want to remove because it's really incredibly hard to bring it back. Yes, that has happened many times. <laughs> So just to summarize, we covered a few commands. We covered ls to list the file. We covered cd to change the directory. We covered touch to create a file. We covered mkdir, so make dir, to make a directory. We also covered move to move a file and rename it as well. So the, the move command can be used to move if you just type in a different location as well. And then cp to copy a file, and then rm to remove a file. That's kind of, I think, all you need, really, to get started. I mean, there are a billion terminal commands, but this is literally like, I'm, you know, I do a lot of stuff with code, and this is like the 10 commands I use 99% of the time. And any time you feel overwhelmed, I mean, there's always our fan favorite, uh, the clear command. It really uh, makes life so much more relaxed. 
Yeah, thank you for yeah, listening in into our little conversation around using the terminal. I hope you had fun and I hope you join us in the next video. Mm -hmm.